Famous scientists' private lives. Isaac Newton, the smartest kid in town. We're in 1643. Charles I of England has just declared war on his own parliament, sparking the English Revolution. The first modern democracy is being conceived. Galileo Galilei, the father of the scientific method and author of one of the most famed phrases in history, and yet it moves, in reference to the earth around the sun, has just made his exit from this world. And as oftentimes happens that old genius is replaced by new genius, in England, almost as if planned by the heavens, a tiny premature baby named Isaac Newton is born. Irrefutably, he will become one of the greatest scientific minds of all time. His infancy was not exactly a bed of roses. His father died before he was born and his mother quickly remarried. Before Newton's third birthday, his stepfather had shipped him off with his maternal grandparents who would eventually love him so much they disinherited him. Maybe that's why he would later admit to having threatened my stepfather and mother with burning their house down, with them still inside, of course. His prodigious mind would cause a rift between him and his classmates who considered him a strange bird. Of strong character and prone to fighting, he spent a lot of time getting into trouble at school. In 1688, he built the first reflective telescope, which was based on mirrors instead of lenses. Newton thus corrected the problems of refracting telescopes which had been invented by none other than Galileo. Newton also formulated the three laws of motion. His first law, or the law of inertia, stated that Every object in a state of uniform motion tends to stay in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. The second law, or the law of force and interaction, allowed for quantitative measures. The change in velocity, or acceleration, is directly proportional and parallel to the net force acting on the body and is in the direction of the net force, and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Newton's third law, or the law of action and reaction, stated the following. For every action there is an opposite and equal reaction. The force exerted by two bodies involved are simultaneous, equal, and opposite. These laws are the foundation for classical mechanics, which describes all the physical phenomena that surround us. They say that a chance coincidence revealed to Newton the universal law of gravitation which precisely describes everything in the known physical universe. From the fall of an apple from a tree to the rotation of planets orbiting suns in far-off galaxies, his law can predict how objects will behave. That's one small step for man. The technology that landed man on the moon in 1969 was based on his gravitational one principles. Newton was a man of great religious conviction, but he practiced Arianism, a branch of Christianity that did not believe in the Holy Trinity, as there was no proof of its existence in the scriptures. When he discovered that the orbits of the planets weren't perfect, he suffered terribly. Newton could not come to terms with the fact that God would create something defective. He experimented incessantly on the nature of light and concluded against the accepted doctrines of the time that light was made up of particles. It wasn't until the 20th century that he would actually be proven in part right. In 1666, Newton discovered the principles of differential and integral calculus at the same time that Gottfried Leibniz discovered these same principles in Germany. Newton and Leibniz went head-to-head -head in a very public battle to try and take credit for discovering and developing this branch of mathematics. The battle ended up dividing and pitting British mathematicians against mathematicians all over Europe and would halt the progress of science for decades to come. Even though he had a prodigious mind and saw much fame and fortune in his day, Newton considered himself humbly ignorant of the world that surrounded him. He would say of himself, I was like a boy playing by the seashore, becoming excited when I found a smooth pebble or, or a prettier seashell than the rest, whilst the great ocean of truth lay entirely undiscovered before me.
Newton spent years studying alchemy, searching for things like the Philosopher's Stone, which could turn any metal into gold, or the elixir of eternal life, which would grant him immortality. Oftentimes experimenting on his own body, he poisoned himself on more than one occasion, sometimes coming close to death. Newton and Leibniz each have a crater on the moon named after them. Newton died in 1727 at the tender age of 84. The international unit that measures force was named after him. <laughs>